had to win alone before the fight began. Can defeat a man that God declares a champion. And listen to me. And when we are fighting, when because there is no battle in Christ, we are fighting from that position. We are fighting from the position of victory. You are not getting me. I need you to understand. We are fighting from the position of victory. And so when I say in the name of Jesus, I am talking from every realm, seated with Christ from a realm of supernatural. We can declare the winners long before the fight began. You can defeat a man that God declares a champion. Been declared the winners long before the fight began. You can defeat a man God has given The fight began. Can defeat a man that God declares a champion. And listen to me. And when we are fighting, when because there is no battle in Christ, we are fighting from that position. We are fighting from the position of victory. You are not getting me. I need you to understand. We are fighting from the position of victory. And so when I say in the name of Jesus, I am talking from every realm, seated with Christ, from a realm of supernatural. We can declare the winners long before the fight began. You can defeat a man that God declares a champion. Been declared the winners long before the fight began. You can defeat a man who God has given me. fight began can defeat a man that God declares a champion and listen to me and when we are fighting when because there is no battle in Christ we are fighting from that position we are fighting from the position of victory you are not getting me I need you to understand we are fighting from the position of victory and so when I say in the name of Jesus, I am talking from every realm, seated with Christ, from a realm of supernatural. We can declare the winners long before the fight began. You can defeat a man that God declares a champion. Been declared the winners long before the fight began. You can defeat a man who God has given me.
before the fight began Can defeat a man that God declares a champion And listen to me And when we are fighting when Because there is no battle in Christ We are fighting from that position We are fighting from the position of victory You are not getting me I need you to understand We are fighting from the position of victory And so when I say in the name of Jesus I am talking from every realm Seated with Christ from a reign of supernatural When you declare the winners long before the fight began You can defeat a man that God declares a champion Been declared the winners long before the fight began You can defeat a man who God has given Before the fight began, can defeat a man that God declares a champion. And listen to me, and when we are fighting, when because there is no battle in Christ, we are fighting from that position, we are fighting from the position of victory. You are not getting me. I need you to understand. We are fighting from the position of victory. And so when I say in the name of Jesus, I am talking from every realm, seated with Christ from a reign of supernatural. We can declare the winners long before the fight began. You can defeat a man that God declares a champion. Been declared the winners long before the fight began. You can defeat a man who God has given me. Before the fight began, can defeat a man that God declares a champion. And listen to me, and when we are fighting, when because there is no battle in Christ, we are fighting from that position, we are fighting from the position of victory. You are not getting me. I need you to understand. We are fighting from the position of victory. And so when I say in the name of Jesus, I am talking from every realm, seated with Christ from a reign of supernatural. We can declare the winners long before the fight began. You can defeat a man that God declares a champion. Been declared the winners long before the fight began. You can defeat a man who God has given
before the fight began Can defeat a man that God declares a champion And listen to me And when we are fighting when Because there is no battle in Christ We are fighting from that Before the fight began, can defeat a man that God declares a champion. And listen to me, and when we are fighting, when because there is no battle in Christ, we are fighting from that position, we are fighting from the position of victory. You are not getting me. I need you to understand. We are fighting from the position of victory. And so when I say in the name of Jesus, I am talking from every realm, seated with Christ from a realm of supernatural. We have been declared the winners long before the fight began. You can defeat a man that God declares a champion. Been declared the winners long before the fight began. You can defeat a man who God has given victory. Fighting from victory. Yeah. Oh, yes, I'm fighting from victory. Yeah. Hey. Oh, yeah. When we are fighting, when because there is no battle in we are fighting from that position we are fighting from the position of victory you are not getting me I need you to understand we are fighting from the position of victory and so when I say in the name of Jesus I am talking from every realm seated with Christ from a realm of
son worship in the Father. Give him all the glory that he deserves. Give him all the honor. Give him all the praise. He's highly lifted above every situation. Oh yes, Jesus, we've come to worship you. We join the hosts of heaven to sing holy, holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Oh, you are in control, Jesus. We give you praise. We honor you. Oh, we bless your name. You're in control. 
Are you ready? Hey, my God is good. Oh.
is the fifth day today. Come on, if you're excited, shout fire! Hallelujah! It is time for offering. The Bible says, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest shall not cease. I prophesy, your offering will produce results. In the name of Jesus, let's gladly package our offering. It is time to give to the God of champion. After that has been done, please let's stand on our feet. From every wing, let's stand. We give God standing here. Let's take a step of faith and begin to pray. Declare on that offering in our hands. Let's begin to speak to it. Viewers all over the world, it is time for offering. You can join us by picking any of the bank details on your screen. And I pray that the God of my Father, who specializes in turning a nobody to somebody, will beautify your lives in Jesus' name. As we have prayed and declared, so shall it be in Jesus' name. I stand in the office of my Father, and I declare to that offering in your hand, it is blessed in the name of Jesus. That your offering offers you access to breakthrough. Offers you access to enlargement. Offers you access to in increase. In the name of Jesus. That very offering in your hand. Set to all forms of depth around your life. In Jesus. Much less than we have prayed. If you believe, shout fire. Hallelujah. Choir. You are good and your mercy is forever.
marathon prayer and fasting has been as a shining light that has been shining brighter and brighter by the day and this fifth day is not an exception we have a special personality in the house a daughter of my father that will be blessing us this evening with a powerful ministration with Jesus joy in our heart let's put our hands together as we welcome the O.P. Sylvia Akotwe also known as Bella for administration. Somebody jam your hands together. Take the stage, Lord, have your way, 
I'm just a vessel and nothing more. God, when you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. As I worship you tonight. You, Jesus, Master Taladabosh and Talazuita. Father, we give you praise, oh God, because we know you are here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Take the stage, Lord, and have your way. Father, have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. Lord, when you're gone, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you, Lord. If I take the stage. Take the stage tonight and have your way, oh God. I'm just satisfied just to see you tonight. Let it be deliverance. Let it be transformation tonight. Let it be healing. That is all I ask for tonight. Just take the glory. I'm satisfied. Jesus if you know and you know that you are excited to be in the house of the Lord jump up and celebrate Jesus tonight are you ready my, my father said something yesterday he said your name will introduce you how you introduce yourself will determine how the world will introduce you Ladies and gentlemen, help me, help me celebrate the fearless lioness in the house. My mother, the woman that I call my mother. You people may not know her one-on-one, -on -one, but I know her one-on-one. -on -one. She is down to earth. She is the best you can ever think of. And above all, she cooks delicious meal. <laughs> Mama, I celebrate you tonight. I have eaten her food. I am a testimony. I'm telling you what it is. If you eat her food, you will begin to speak in tongues. Mama, I love you. I celebrate you. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce, I want to reintroduce to you tonight my father, Papa Joshua Igila. The Aurora Master, prophetic professor, the one and only. He is one man that I say the demon Budoza. Help me celebrate him. Celebrate him for me tonight. Because tonight, something new is about to happen in your life. Finally, let me all let you know. I am my father's daughter aka professor senator sylvia isabella Aotuo, the daughter of the fearless lioness if you touch me by mistake you will die by correction are you ready tonight i have two songs to minister tonight one is I belong and the other one is it can only get better. As you listen, may you be blessed in the name of Jesus. At the sound, please.
voice of God, soft and still, speak to me, restore my joy, take me to your dwelling place, that's why I long. Take me to where you are. I belong to the most high, the most high, most high God. I come from Zion, the city of the most high God. Yeah, grace found me.
can only get better. If your neighbor is not talking, tell him that it can only get better. As you listen, may you be blessed in Jesus' name. Add the sound, please. Do this to the right, to the left, uh huh, to the right, uh huh, to the left. Come on, to the right, hey, to the left. Let's go. It can only get better, better. It can only get better, better. It can only get better, better. It can only get better with Christ. It can only get better. in your life in the name of Jesus. God bless you. I love you all. Hallelujah. Somebody shout fire. It will get better. In the name of Jesus. Before you leave here tonight, I say it will get better. If you believe, shout fire. Let's also put our hands together. As we welcome the prophetic voice.
just back away And the violet makes play Miracles happen It is time All things are possible In the name of Jesus Chains are broken In His name There are Let's lift up our hands and thank the Lord. Today is the fifth day 
of this powerful fasting and prayer and it happens to be a leadership and a minister conference lift up your hands and let's thank God thank him mm. include me Lord in your end time revival make me a watchman over the city oh lord i'm ready oh lord i'm willing give me your grace
for the reading of the word. Luke chapter 24 verse 2 through 5. Let's ponder it as we read. And they found the stone rolled away at the sepulchre verse 3 I want to hear you where eh? and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus verse 4 thunder it and it came to pass as they were much perplexed there about behold two men stood by them in the shining garment and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth they said unto them why seek ye the living among the dead let's read verse 5 again and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth. They said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Sit down balanciously. I'm sharing with us on what I titled Mystery of His Presence. And about mystery of His Presence. 
some of you might wonder sometimes when I open my mouth to talk I talk deep things that are deeper than what you see for the latter kill it but the spirit give it life in the book of, of Corinthians he said these things were hidden from the foundation of the earth so mysteries are things that are already revealed to us but how beef they are documented for those who can search things out in the realm of the spirit in the book of second corinthians 9 25 and 26 say let every man strive for mastery mastery verse 25 say let every man strive for mastery so it simply means that as a leader as a man of god as a member as a minister you don't have to be a man of god to be a leader can you put nine verse 25 say let every man strive for mastery is temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown so this athlete where you see them run you see them discipline themselves in order to get a corruptible crown how much more we in the spirit if you're an evangelist evangelize well if a pastor pastor well if a politician politicize well if a psalmist sing well if a civil servant servant well if a police police well if a husband husband well if a wife wife well so he said he said as a matter of fact strive for mastery Deuteronomy 29 29 he talks about the secret things belong get to God. Put it there. See, for the secret things belong to the Lord, our God. For those things which are revealed belong unto us and our children forever, that we may do all the words in the law. So, God has ownership of secrets so just like you buy a land and they do transfer of ownership to you anything that has to do with secret in the kingdom it belongs to God God owns ownership now hear this for you to be able to assess divine secrets you need a revelator a revelator is the one that God has transferred the deed of assignment of ownership of mysteries to their heart and so when there is a change of document a revelator has access to the secret so he relates revelation to you in the kingdom we don't give information we give revelation and revelation is the access to reformation anytime you see revelation you see reformation you see rehabilitation you see resuscitation you see things work in accordance what will keep you in life is not the amount of work you do is the amount of access to revelation that becomes reality now in the book of luke chapter 24 verse 3 let's start from verse 3 now let's start from verse 2 hear this there are some of you the reason why 
you have not been able to assess the presence of God there is a stone and I came to roll away the stone are you hearing what I'm saying the presence of God is a valuable asset the presence of God is the presence of Jehovah overdue himself anytime we talk about the presence of God we are talking about his dwelling his settlement the word the presence of God is also Shekinah glory the word Shekinah is actually making visible the manifestation of God on earth upon a thing upon a man upon a building upon a life the word Shekinah is gotten from the Hebrew word called Shakan it simply means to reside or to dwell or to make a place your abode am I helping somebody here is somebody hearing what I'm saying I prophesy you will not operate without his presence I thought you were shouting that one well when the presence of God start operating upon a man's life we say Shekinah glory is in operation am I talking to somebody here so the word Shekinah is another way of expressing the manifestation of God upon a man's life do you know that there are stones that will not allow you to assess God's presence there are stones that will not allow you to experience his glory am I communicating here put verse 3 follow me gradually because I want us to pray verse 3 of Luke 24 he said and they enter in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus Christ <laughs> I, 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 I felt taught when I stumbled into the scripture they entered into the tomb two men were by the tomb and you remember from three days ago I keep telling you that anytime the Bible talk about angels he talks about men so these were two angels when they got there he was not present in the tomb he was absent from the tomb it simply means it is possible for God to be absent and yet man is present and yet man think God is present follow me so it's possible it is possible for man you need to get this and I don't want you to miss this because this formed the basis of the message it simply means that it is possible for God to be absent and yet man is present and God is not present there the angels were present but God was absent and he was not there but yet the angels of God were still by the tomb I wonder what they were doing so it's possible that a president can come with his bodyguard and after he finished rather than the bodyguard following him then they remain don't mistake the presence of the bodyguard for the president so it is possible for a ministry to be experiencing the presence of an angel and not the presence of God oh am I talking here it is possible for a ministry to be experiencing the presence of an angel and think it's the presence of God because he was no longer in the tomb but he was no longer in the tomb the angels were present now put put the next verse see this see this I want you to follow me and it came to pass and they were much perplexed there but behold the two men stood by them in shining garment so the presence of God can be absent and the man is shining the presence of God can be absent and everything looks okay that 
don't mistake prosperity for the presence of God. The presence of God can be absent and yet the pastor is prospering. The presence of God can be absent and yet you look prosperous. The presence of God can be absent and yet you are giving testimony of the cars. The Bible says the body of this man were shining but God was not there. You see we mistake material realism for the presence of God. The presence of God is not gold. The presence of God is not money. The presence of God is not silver. The presence of God is not car. The presence of God is not the ABCD that we call in the church attendance building B C cash. So you can have the attendance, you can have the building B, you can have C cash and yet the the glory of God is not there. Are you understand? The reason why you have the attendance, the building, and the cash is that one is that God once visited that place and left his deposit there, but it doesn't mean he is there. I am tired of a church without the presence of God. A church that celebrates materialism, physicality, and the the presence of God is no longer there. Where are the God? Where are the gospel that our forefather preached? Where are the days of the anointed? Where are the days of the glory? Where are the days when men were passionate about God? Where are the days when men pray? Where are the days of Apostle Ayo, Papa Lola? When men stay in the village? When men stay on the mountain? When men pray with all their heart, with all their might, when men stay in the forest asking God for revival all over West Africa, where are the days when a man is on his knee and he did not know he has spent three days praying? Where are the days of compassionate dwelling in the presence of God? Don't mistake the attendance for the presence. Don't mistake the attendance for the presence. The attendance is not a guarantee that is there. The ministry can be shining and Ichabod has taken place. Sit down, let me talk to you. Am I helping somebody here? Oh, 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 am I too fast? Am I too fast? Am I too fast? David said, cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. Take not thy Holy Ghost from me. Because it is possible to be in position and the presence of God has gone. Do you know why? Most of us believe that when the presence of God is there, that is when you pay your house rent. That is when you build the house. That's when you drive the best car. It might just be a residue of what that he visited and left. Am I talking here? The angels were behind. And God began to speak to me. He said the end time church are not operating with my presence. They are operating with an angelic encounter. And so it is possible that the hand of a man is there. But the presence of God have disappeared. Where are the days where sisters will pray, where sisters will sing, and the glory of God will fall down? I'm talking about the presence. Where are the days when men, when choirs are singing, people are under the anointing? I'm talking about the presence. Where are the days where pastors don't mind when I have a car, when I don't have the car, I just want to preach the gospel that he may be preached. Ah, where are the days? Today you are saying that I don't have a, I don't have a car, I don't have a house. Where are the days of money cry? Where are the days of boss evangelism? Where are the days of tracks? Are you still born again? The question is, where is the presence of God? When the presence of God is absent, your materialism can make you feel that God is still there.
the angel waited but he was not there he said why are you looking for the living among the dead so it is possible that the garment is shining but the shining light has left it is possible don't use God and drop him the presence of God is the secret of the end time church if the presence of God is not around then our gathering will be a social gathering the presence of God ah, when I see some grace preachers disgracing themselves in the name of revelation of grace they have reduced the power of God and render it of non effect because the presence of God have left the temple Ichabod has taken place Eli has broken his neck and the glory and the act of God have been captured the church cannot be separated when we see miracles we are angry we say it's from the devil because we no longer believe in Jekina glory he cannot be around and the glory not be felt when we see the power of God working we complain of the power of God because we don't understand the purpose of the presence of God A man called Alexander Dowie, great man born in Scotland, highly anointed, had an encounter with the Lord, schooled, uh, uh, schooled for some time in Scotland, and after that went to Australia to start his, his, his program. And when he got to Australia, people were dying unnecessarily. There was a plague, a pandemic during his days in Australia. Uh, and Alexander, Alexander Dawi made and had an encounter with one scripture. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. That how Jesus anointed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with power and of the Holy Ghost who went about doing good. He had that scripture high and, and he said to himself, I am tired of attending the, the burial ceremony of my members. How brutal was the presence of God on Dawi that, by, that, that there was an aggression in the spirit of this man and suddenly there was a knock that one of the member child have died and the man went there the doctor certified that the child have died he came up with an aggression when the presence of God come there will be real miracles and he prayed for the child and the child came back to life he started a massive healing and miraculous ministry he was setting captives free discharging people from sick bed the oil was massive the aggression was massive the power was massive the revelation was massive he was entering hospital discharging people praying for people the anointing upon alexander was so high see that all of a sudden something heated his head that he should enter politics he decided to contest for the parliament parliamentary system uh, uh, in those days and and he abandoned the ministry listen pastors if god has not called you into politics don't enter and all of a sudden the church that he started with fire went down he lost the church he lost the election then he returned back it is not it is not a sin to fail but don't allow yourself to be on the ground if you fail shake up the doors and come back and enter the presence of the most high am i talking to somebody don't let don't let the presence of the lord depart from you the guy prayed and went back and revival started he went on the ship down to america in america he started and the 
there was a massive revival outbreak. The guy was on par. The miraculous power of God was so high. God gave him another chance. He was he was high. He built healing homes. Miracles were happening. He was discharging people. It was said that he was arrested more than 100 times because he was healing the sick and they said he never had medical license and he said when Jesus was alive he was not a medical doctor but yet he was setting the captives free now listen to me why Alexander Dawi was going and the fire was heavy on this man he heard about a woman called Maria Udo Ekta Maria Udo Ekta the mother of Pentecostalism the woman was on fire and her anointing was exceptional she will heal people anoint them they will fall under the anointing and they will enter into trance they will meet Jesus and Jesus will heal them they will come to share their encounter in when Al, when Alexander Dawi heard about the manifestation, he went there to see for himself because there was this, there was this uh, a feeling that he had that he was the only man of God with the anointing until he saw another woman with an anointing that was more dangerous than him. Watch this. One of his mistakes, he could not stand the oil of God on Maria Udo Ekta. He avoided her and declared openly he criticized her. See that? When you see other men of God running down another man of God it's satanic. Hear this. David was anointed, right? Saul was anointed, right? But David was not given permission to attack or to kill Saul, right? The reason why Saul attacked David, it was because he had an evil spirit that was upon him. When you see another man of God attacking another man of God, an evil spirit from the presence of God has entered the man. You cannot be anointed and fight another anointed. If the anointing is real, it will not attack your brother. If the anointing is real, it will not destroy your brother. Am I helping somebody here? Or shut fire? I am tired of where I am. I want to go to the next level. Tell me, but I want to go to the next level. I'm not hearing you well. Say, I want to go to the next level. I'm not hearing you well. Say it where I want to go to the next level. Uh, I say, I want to go to the next level. You, we don't need, you don't need to have a big church. Uh, to build a big house before you say the presence of God is there. Stay in your capacity. Stay in your capacity. Can I talk to some pastors here? Some of you might have those 12 members, 20 members, but in the sight of God you are more than the pastor that have 100,000 members because it's not by the attendance. It is by are you in the presence of God? Is God present? Are you having a shining why the Lord is not in the tomb Exodus chapter 20 verse 21 watch this let me show you something put it put it for me are you ready? And the people stood afar off. And Moses drew near unto the dark. What? I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Somebody shot fire. Shot fire. No, maybe before I go there, let's go to 33 first. I will come to this. 33 verse 2. 33 verse 2. Look at it. 
Don't go anywhere the presence of God will not go. And I will send my angel for thee. And I will drive out the Canaanite, the Aborite, the Hittite, the Perisite, the Avite, and the Jebusite. Verse 3. Verse 3. Unto a land flowing with milk and honey. For I will not go up in the midst of thee. For thou art a stiff naked people. Lest I consume thee in the way. <laughs> God said. I will send my angel. To follow you people. To go. And as my angel are following you. You will get a land flowing with milk and honey. Please. Never you confuse prosperity for the presence of God. He said, but me, myself, I am not going to go with you. Because if I go with you, if my presence go with you, because of the way you are stiff naked, I will kill you people. That means this journey you are going, you will not end. So that means there is a dangerous part of the presence of God and there is the favor part of the presence of God. So there is a presence of God that can come upon you and kill you. That's why Hebrew 12 29 said he's a consumer. God said I will not follow you guys. If I follow you guys I will kill you because you are not willing to change. That's why some miracles can, some ministries can see the power of God. Because if God will come down he can kill the set man. If God will come down he can kill everybody. So God decided I will send an angel to follow you. You are going to see the land flowing with milk and honey but you are not going to get my own present. Because there is this presence that separates boys from men, that separates girls from women. There is this presence that makes things turn around. So, the question is Are you having the presence of an angel of God? Go to verse 14. Now, when you read from verse 4, 5, 6, 7, the children of Israel start crying and they were begging and Moses begged, Lord, Lord, help us. Then God decided, okay. And he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give you what rest. It is the presence of God that gives you rest from battles. So you can have the money. You can have everything. And yet, you have battles on all sides. But when the presence of God come, battles end. Storms end. Storms end. Hear what Moses said in verse 5. About the presence. About verse 15. About the presence of God. He said, if your presence will not go with us. He said, and he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up is suicidal to step out of life without the presence of God. How many ministries have started and God is not behind it? How many of you have entered something that God is not behind? How many of you have started a political ambition and God is not behind? How many of you have entered a relationship that God is not behind? The fact that is flourishing, it doesn't mean it is endorsed. That's why I, I look at some sons. You break out of a father. You can be having the attendance. Very soon you will understand that the oil might just be an extra overflow from where you got it from. After some time you will be like the five foolish virgins that do not carry extra because the presence of God have departed. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is 
not living here we stay here where are we going we are not going anywhere if you don't carry us we are not going we want to stay here we want to die here until your presence go with us you two of you come come let me see something i want to bless two of you eh? i want to bless two of you I want to bless two of you with little money. Eh? Watch this. This all I have. Are you picking them? This all I have to bless you guys. So. I decide now I want to bless you. You hear me? So, take. I've blessed you. You? You are blessed. You can go. Are you seeing the expression on the second person? Come, 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 come. Face the church. Are you seeing the expression on Pastor Jude? I said I want to bless the two of them with money. I decided to carry all the money and I gave to Pastor Jakes. Then for him, I laid my hands on him. He felt I've not blessed him. Who among them carried the blessing? Is the one that I lay my hands on. The one that carried the money got material blessing. But the one without the money is feeling that I have not blessed him. And that is the problem. The real presence of God is not in the material. There is a machine. He might feel that he's cheated, but he doesn't know that something has dropped upon him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Some of you are looking for the money. You are pursuing the money in ministry. You are not pursuing the blessing. You are not pursuing the presence. You don't understand. The money we finish. The blessing will not finish. Or am I talking? Because you don't understand spiritual things. You feel I just need the money. I need the money. I need the money. I need the money. I need the money overnight. You don't need the money. You need the blessing. Exodus 20 verse 21. Let me show you some things now. I'm going to be as brief but <laughs> I need you to get it. Sometime the presence of God is inside darkness. Now I want to I want to say some things you might not like it but for those of you who are leaders you will soon understand. 
There is a part in God that contains darkness. Now it's time to talk, isn't it? There is a part in God that contains darkness. Yes. Follow me. Don't argue. Just follow me. Even me too, I argue for my heart until I discover it. Now, in 1 John chapter 1 verse 5, he said, our it, the guy was saying that somebody informed me about this thing that is the father of light. He said, then this message which we have heard of him, the revelation did not come to him. He heard it from somewhere. And in fact, John didn't want to implicate himself alone. He said, this message, we, all of us, we, he did not tell us who are the we because he was not sure of what he was saying here. He said, blow it please. He said, this message, can you just remove me and leave the scripture first? This message that we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Now watch this. He said we heard the message. Not that we discovered it. Not that he told us. We heard the message. In fact, for you not to question me too much, I have to put it that we, all of us, we, the way he didn't specify that we heard that God is the God of light. That is true, but not complete truth. Follow me. Don't 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 be in in a hurry. So we heard that God is a God of light. This is where the body of Christ have lost it because we feel that if it must be God, everything has to be completely light like you see. So whenever we see a dark part, we question the credibility, the authenticity and the, 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 the relevance. And so we have, been, we have been manipulated not to understand what is the true presence of God. Follow me. And that's why in Exodus 20, verse 21, let me start. I'll give you about six scriptures so that it will, un, you, it will help you to understand. He said, and put it, he said, and the people, and the people stood afar off. And Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. I, 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 I thought God. God, God, God is the God of light. Ah, but when the presence of God came down, the people saw. Do you know why Israelites ran away? They cannot understand. We know he's the God of light. We don't understand how light can be inside darkness and darkness is still shining and light is still shining. The appearance was terrible. So they stood afar off and said we can't come near. We don't understand what kind of presence is this. How, how can he come down? The Bible didn't say darkness. Tick, 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 tick darkness. If he had used darkness, I would have said, maybe the writer was making mistake. He said, thick darkness. They stood afar. Do you know why the church have not got the power and we have not entered the dimension we need to enter? Do you know why? When we see an anointed man and the anointing is high, we say darkness. Then we go afar. Because how much the man is anointed, we go afar. We say, no, no, we cannot approach. It is only few men like Moses that understand. The more people criticize, the more they talk, the more they say this thing is bad. That is where the presence of God is. The presence of God is not in the direction of acceptability. You are not getting me. Can I preach it? Am I going too fast? Am I going too fast? 
Oh God, can help me. If I can get you to understand, am I talking to somebody? Whenever you see people drawing afar, the Israelites say we can't come near. And that's what is happening. Because we feel if it is God, there must be light, there must be chandelier, there must be sunlight. The Bible said, and when the presence of God appeared, there was thick darkness. The people draw afar, but Moses understand because he has seen God face to face. So he knows that whenever there is darkness, the light is there. I am not advertising darkness. Darkness is not as darkness in its literal form. But what does this mean? Whenever you see there is trouble, I can pay my house rent. I am frustrated. I feel like committing suicide. That is when God is present. When you are driving your car, flying your aircraft, it might be an angel because I am your present help in the time of your need. When I go through storm, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Thy rod, thy staff, they are with me. The rod is the word of God. Jesus is the word. He is there. That's why I understand that darkness is an enablement of the presence of God. What if I say, when you conclude that God has gone, God said, I have not gone. When you lost your father, that was when Shekinah glory came down. But you feel that he has gone. When you lost your house, that's when Shekinah glory came. Some of you will say, they didn't give me the appointment. It means God is far. God said, no, don't draw far. Be a Moses generation. Go to the darkness. That is when God is around. So God has some part that look dark. How can the father of light appear and darkness is thick and light is there? The Israelites say, no, 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 no. We can't come closer. This is not according to what they say to us. They say, if it is light, it must be white. White clothes, white shoe, white everything. Ah, uh, but whenever it's black, it's Lucifer. Deuteronomy 4, verse 10. Let me show you another one. Follow me, follow me, follow me. Just follow this. So that's all. You will understand whether you have the presence or not. <laughs> that you don't have members doesn't mean the presence is not there. Sp especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Oreb, when the Lord said unto me gather me my people together and I will make them to hear my words that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth and that they may teach their children Go on to verse 11. Follow me. And he came near and stood under the mountain. <laughs> and the mountain burned with fire. And in the midst of heaven, with darkness. In the midst of heaven, with darkness. Cloud and thick darkness. Ah! I thought when he come, he will appear with light. God said to me, son, when you see 
darkness. It's not darkness as in light go off. I'm trying to tell you that whenever you see things that make you cry, but presence is there, that the meaning of Shekinah glory is not drinking rice, you're eating rice and doing wedding, that the meaning of Shekinah glory is your God present in the midst of sorrow. That sometimes when you see God is far, that is when God is present. When you were in the midst of that accident and you lose the car but you came out, that was when God was present. God is trying to use the situation to speak to you. He's trying to tell you, I've been trying to talk to you, but you could not hear. I have to come down as usual to talk to you. Could you believe that sometime when your church is not growing, it's not that God is not with you. Shekinah glory is around. He said, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can I speak to you? The attendance might not be the presence of God. I am not talking because I don't have crowd. I am not talking because I am poor. But I'm telling you that the attendance is not the present. The crowd is not the present. The aircraft is not the present. The presence of God. This is the real presence. Am I helping you? Is it too much? Is it sinking? I, 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 am I communicating? Is somebody hearing me? God, I need your presence. What if you have seen his presence, but you don't want the presence? You want the cash and you don't know that the presence of God when everything is scattered around your life and it feels your world is crumbling down that is the thick cloud of his presence and the Lord is saying can you slow down and hear my voice when you feel that all hell are broken and you feel like crying whenever I see people gossip a man of God and the man of God is in the internet everywhere I don't join them I understand the man of God might be experiencing Shekinah presence Shekinah glory because that time God is saying slow down and hear my voice I have come down hear my voice my voice cannot be communicated in the car in the new building that is not it that a material thing I am the God of all flesh when I want to speak I come down in the thickness of the darkness of the cloud sit down all the time all the time I heard God clearly was when I was in the midst of storms when all hell broke loose he would suddenly enter into the room and said my son sit down and hear me then I feel I feel I feel in my spirit I thought you have left me then he will say to me whenever the storm comes I am trying to slow you down to remove your eyes from the materials from the buildings from the provisions from the fame I want you alone I am a jealous God I want to enjoy you so when I say Silence everything when I allow the fire to burn, the thunder to blast, it is to slow you down to hear my voice. Can you hear me? So, what then is the presence of God? The presence of God is that thick cloud that you are running away from. First King 18 2 12 18 12 8 12 I mean see that 8 12 please follow me let me show you some things first king 8 12 and then spoke Solomon and the Lord said that he would dwell in the thickness of dark 
darkness. Ah, ah, when I when I stumbled into this, I sat down on the ground. God said, when Solomon was about to dedicate the temple, God now is introducing himself to Solomon. I am the God that dwells in the thickness of darkness, not just darkness. I am the unapproachable light that stays as the father of light and I use darkness to cover her. So I don't want anybody to know who I am. So it is only few that can unravel me. They think I am in the midst of the celebration. But every time there is a battle, that is when I am present. Every time there is a Red Sea, that is when I am present. Every time you are in the lion's den, that is when I am present. Every time Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego is in the fire, that is when I am present. Every time, every time the rock refused to produce water, that is when I am present. Every time the ship is about to capsize, that is when I am present. Ah, Katosh, can I preach it like I can preach it? Ah! your presence the persecution is not rejection the depression is not rejection the frustration is not rejection we might be cast down by place by booze, but the presence of god is around I cannot pay my bills. The banks are coming. My presence is there. Okay, sit down. Psalm 18. Verse 7. Let me show you another one. So that you understand. It's not a mistake. 18 verse 7. We we'll read to 12. And the earth shook and trembled. The foundation also of the hills moved. They were shaken because it was rot. Go on. 8. There went up a smoke out of his nostril, fire out of his mouth. Devote coals were kindled by him. David is describing what happened when he cried to God. And this is God. God wants to come down. Fire, smoke coming out everywhere. Verse 9. He bowed the heavens also. He came down. And darkness was under his feet. Hey, I don't know this. He was flying down. Darkness was under his feet. Then I asked myself, ah, I, I thought when you are coming down, light will be under your feet. He said, whenever I'm about to manifest, then touch your weeping may endure for the night. Your joy come in the morning. Do you know the meaning of the darkness under his feet? Whenever God is moving in your life, you will be seen as if it is darkness, attack. That is the presence of Shekinah glory. Okay, sit down. Let's read. Let's read. Verse what? 10. Let's go to verse 10. <laughs> and he rode upon the cherub. Katamayakata. And did fly. <laughs> and don't forget as he's doing that. Darkness was under his feet. Great are the feet of them that brings the good tidings. <laughs> and he flied upon the wings of the wind go to now he made darkness the secret place of his pavilion round about him where dark waters and thick cloud of the sky he made darkness his secret place ah, 
Omayami Lenu. He made, he made, he made darkness his secret place. You don't get it. So that's when I understand that sometimes when the pastor cry, uh, it doesn't mean God is far. The anointed might also cry. It doesn't mean God has rejected you. What am I trying to do? What is the objective of this sermon? I came to talk to the bleeding leader that says God has left me. I came to talk to that businessman that said God has left me. I came to talk to the politician that said God has left me. I came to talk to the pastor that said God has left me. The Lord said no I have not left you. As a matter of fact I am closer than ever before. I am closer. 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 I am present. I am present. I am present. I am present. Shaking the presence, shaking the glory. I am present. I am present. Hey, sit down. Could it be? That when there's darkness and I feel mm, when my heart is overwhelmed you lead me through the rock that is higher than high that is higher than high When my heart is overwhelmed, you lead me to the rock that is higher than high. That is higher than high. Allow anybody to make you feel your predicament means God is far. He might just slow you down in order to speak to you. He just want to talk to you. So he's allow you to see troubles. Do you know the problem of the church? We call the darkness devil. We call materialism and comfort God. That is why it is only few people who have encountered him. Because the children of Israel in Exodus 20, 21 drew back and refused to go close to the cloud. That is why it is only few operating in the power. Because so many people have tacked the dark cloud devil. When Archbishop Benson Idahusa was alive, great man of exploit, a man with radical mentality, a man who wrote a book called Fire in My Bones. The guy was burning on fire. Papa was on fire everywhere but can I tell you something interesting he was not accepted he was criticized he was attacked he was a subject of critics everywhere because he started what others could not accept he broke the ground that so many fathers of Pentecostalism are enjoying today I feel like talking to the adults here I'm not a tribalistic pastor but God in some hours was telling me that the revival started from
from Edo. There was a fire that was on Edo State. Ah, because they were supposed to be the front runners. What the Yorubas were doing now is what Papa Idausa carried. But there's a spirit in Edo that they fight their they fight their glory. They fight one another. They don't allow the light to shine. They don't allow. I'm sorry, I'm not being hard. They don't allow the light to shine. They attack. They attack. They bring down their general. The Igbos would have taken over. The Igbos would have taken over. But there's a spirit of Judas is carried. We betray one another. We will not allow anyone to clap up. If I will not go up, nobody should go up. The anointing flow. He would have entered Benue and Kogi. But the problem of the Kogi is disunity. The Benue is disunity. No love at all. But hear me, the Lord said to me when I was praying, he said, the fire that is about to rise up from the north, there is a fire rising up from the north. It's like a season for the north. There is a fire. There are some end time trade blazers that are about to rise up. That's why when you check, you will see that the revival is heavily concentrated around the north, despite Islam. Am I too hard? Am I talking too much? God gave the Edomites great generals. But what is happening? You are stoning your prophet. You are attacking your prophet. When Abishab Idausa was around, all roads to be near. Bishop Oyedeko, Ah Baba Adeboye, Francis Waloke. Name them. The guy was everywhere. How can a revival that start? Show me your general. You have used your heart to kill your generals. You have used your tongue to slay your general. Even Chris or Yakilome that rise up have to isolate himself in order to stand. Am I too? Am I heavy? Am I heavy? Sit down. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Alexander Dowie experienced power, experienced grace. After fighting Maria Udo Eka, he went up, built a tent of close to nine to ten thousand. Crowds were gathering. He became a prophetic voice to president. There was a particular president, he gave a prophetic word and warning that if he's not careful, they will kill in America. And the guy didn't heal and was killed. He raised up so much, so much, so much, so much until pride entered him. And when the pride entered him, he built a city which is called the Zion City. And he bought about 60 something hectares of land. And built the city. Almost 20,000 people were resident in the city. And people begin to call him present Elijah. The Elijah of our time. It went up to his brain. Pride took him up. And then he began to lose grip. He tried to extend to Mexico to build Zion City. He consulted the government of Turkey. He tried to look for a way to, to, to buy the walls of Jerusalem. He ran out of money because of competition and competitive mind. And at the end, at the tail end, he died. But before he died, there was a man called John, John Gillick. That man was part of Alexander Dawi. He ran from him and did not run from him. But he took the good part of Alexander that we fire when you are under a father look at the fire look at the part and hold and after that he went into business uh, John Gile went into business and after that the oil came upon that man the oil was so heavy so high and he entered ministry and he continued in the healing ministry it was so powerful so powerful he became one of the first pioneers that left America
why he did not have time for his wife that the wife died of malnutrition so it is possible to be heavily anointed and be heavily stupid on family grounds till the day the children all the children ever left the well they accused their father for killing their mother when he returned back to america and learned his lesson and continued the healing crusade and discovered he had no money anymore to pay the missionaries he asked all of them to come back when they came back in the meeting he told them i have fought i have done my best no money to pay you salary and so i cannot force myself and then he told them i want every one of you to go back home and face your family i don't want what happened to me to happen to you guys and the missionaries his pastors asked for is that when we die do our burial we want to preach how many pastors do we have now they don't pay you your salary you harass the man of god they don't pay you your salary you harass the senior pastor it's no longer the work of god it's the work of a pastor you are not here because you want to serve god you are here because of your pocket how many of us will be like these young guys who told john gillette that we are not here for the money whether we die we die we are they all return back to africa to do the gospel and they with passion with passion what is wrong with the new church the church the church where pastors are after their pocket when they come around their father it is money they are angry when they come around their father it's no longer the work of god is what we want to eat this is why there is no revival we don't want to pay the price where are the days of money cry where are the days of mountain prayer where are the days of prayer and marathon where 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 are the men of passion where are the men of passion where are the men like john knox where are the men of like john knox give me scotland or i die where are the men of passion where are the women like mara udo hector tentry kuma where are the men that we stay and say we are not here for money we are here for god we are here to follow god where that geo says we don't have money the pastors are angry and they are complaining he has run bankrupt and they are happy to say that it's a shame because it's not Omar about god it's about money it's about money it's about money they run down the pastor all around when he gave them car they don't talk about it when you build a house for them they don't talk about it they they, they don't eat one square meal they run the man of god down where are pastors that were around john g lake where are they where are true sons where are true sons like abioye that we stand before their father and say the only call i have is what god called bishop oyedeko to do where are men who are true servant who are ready to pour water on their father what are we having local champion men who don't know their left from the right everybody wants to be a geo where are men everybody is opening church like a supermarket a mini supermarket is all about business and not passion for so what is happening maranatha 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 my father my father i need your presence i need your fire Let's watch out.